Hello, friends. I'm stepping away from the charts for a moment to speak with you, not just as a scientist, but as a neighbor and a father who is genuinely concerned for the welfare of every household in this storm's path. We are looking at a severe winter event taking shape, and my mission over the next 25 minutes is to arm you with the practical wisdom you need to keep your loved ones and your home secure. Consider this your masterclass in storm survival. I plan to break down the specific actions you need to take, the timeline for taking them, and the reasoning behind every recommendation. I want to share the life-saving insights I have gathered over the years, highlight the pitfalls I see folks fall into, and give you an honest look at what is coming so you can be ready. I need to address the upper Midwest first, because if you are located in eastern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, or the upper peninsula of Michigan, you are sitting right in the crosshairs of the worst weather. You need to brace for blizzard conditions starting Sunday night and running through Monday. We are talking snowfall totals reaching 30 inches in spots, wind gusts hitting 60 miles per hour, and visibility dropping to absolute zero. Do not expect to go anywhere. The roads will not just be treacherous, they will be completely impassable. Here is your battle plan for today. Before the first flake falls. Priority one, get to the market. I am not talking about a quick milk run. You need to provision your pantry for a minimum of three days, though five would be wiser. Assume you are hunkered down and snowed in from Sunday afternoon until at least Tuesday. Grab the essentials, bread, eggs, milk, canned vegetables, pasta, rice, and peanut butter. Focus on nourishment that does not depend on your refrigerator or a complicated recipe to be edible. While you are out, stock up on power. Buy batteries in every size D cells for your heavy duty flashlights and AA and AAA for your weather radios. Pick up candles, a few lighters, and check your first aid kit. If anyone in the house needs medicine, get those refills handled today. Do not gamble on the pharmacy being open come Monday morning. Go check your heating unit right now. If it has been a while since you swapped out that furnace filter, get it done. Verify your thermostat is reading correctly. For those of you blessed with a fireplace or wood stove, bring in more wood than you think you need at least a week's worth. Stack it close to the door so you are not fighting through snowdrifts just to keep the fire going. If you own a generator, fire it up today. Let it run for 30 minutes to ensure it is purring like a kitten. Check the oil and make sure your fuel cans are full. And please hear me on this. Respect the machine. Generators emit carbon monoxide, a silent killer that you cannot smell or see. Never, under any circumstance, run that engine inside your home, your garage, or any enclosed structure. Keep it outdoors, positioned at least 20 feet away from your home's entry points. We lose good people to carbon monoxide poisoning every single winter. Please do not let your family become a tragedy. On that note, go test your carbon monoxide detector immediately. Push the button and listen for the chirp. If it is silent, change the batteries or buy a new unit on the spot. This is non-negotiable. If you do not own one, spend the $20 today. It is a small price to pay for peace of mind and safety. Test your smoke alarms while you are at it. House fires become a major threat during storms because we start using space heaters and candles, putting extra strain on our electrical systems. Ensure those detectors are operational and fresh batteries are installed. Keep a fire extinguisher within reach and make sure every adult knows how to spray it. Let's talk about your truck or car. Go top off the tank today, fill it until it clicks. Remember, gas pumps run on electricity and if the grid goes down, you are stuck with whatever is in your tank. My rule of thumb is to never let the gauge drop below half anytime the weather looks iffy. You need to assemble a survival kit for your vehicle. This is mandatory for anyone living in snow country. Pack a sleeping bag or heavy wool blanket for every passenger. If your heater dies or you run out of fuel, that warmth is your lifeline. Throw in extra layers, hats, heavy gloves, parkas, and boots, even if you are just running a quick errand. Include a medical kit, jumper cables, a sturdy ice scraper, and a compact shovel. Toss in a bag of kitty litter or sand to help with traction if you slide into a ditch. You also need road flares, water, dry food, and a phone charger that plugs into your dash. If you do end up stranded, here is the protocol. Stay put. Unless you see a house right next door, do not leave your vehicle. It is your best shield against the wind. 
You can run the engine for 10 minutes each hour to take the chill off, but you must verify that your tailpipe is not buried in snow. If that pipe gets clogged, the exhaust will flow right back into the cabin and it can be fatal. Step out and check that exhaust pipe every single time you turn the key. Signal for help by tying a bright bandana to your antenna or hanging it out the window. You want to be visible. Flash your hazards if the battery is strong, but manage your power wisely. And try to stay awake. Drifting off in freezing temperatures can be dangerous if your body temperature drops too low. Now let's focus on protecting your biggest investment, your home. Frozen pipes are a nightmare scenario. When that water freezes, it expands with tremendous force and splits the pipe wide open. You could be looking at thousands, maybe tens of thousands of dollars in repairs. Here is how we avoid that mess. Open up the cabinet doors beneath your kitchen and bathroom sinks so the warm air from the house can reach the plumbing. Leave a few faucets dripping, just a slow, pencil-thin trickle is enough. Moving water does not freeze as easily as still water. Prioritize the pipes that run along outside walls or through cold spaces. Go outside and unscrew your garden hoses, then shut off the valve leading to those outdoor spigots if you have one. Wrap any exposed pipes in your garage or basement with foam insulation. You can pick that up at the hardware store for a few bucks, and it is the cheapest insurance policy you will ever buy. Locate your main water shutoff valve immediately. If a pipe does burst, you need to kill the water supply instantly to minimize the flooding. Make sure your spouse and older kids know exactly where it is and how to turn it. If the power fails and you lose heat, you need a backup strategy. A fireplace is a blessing, but only if the chimney has been swept and inspected to prevent creosote fires. If you are relying on space heaters, maintain a three-foot safety zone around them. Keep them away from drapes, bedding, and furniture, and never leave them running in an empty room. Double check that your heater has a tip over switch that cuts the power if it gets knocked over. Please never try to heat your home with a gas stove or a charcoal grill. Those devices release carbon monoxide. Every year we hear heartbreaking stories of families who just wanted to stay warm and made a fatal mistake. Be smart and stay safe. You need to store water. Plan on one gallon per person per day for a three day stretch. If the grid goes down, your water pressure might go with it. Scrub your bathtub and fill it up before the storm lands. You can use that water to flush toilets or wash up, even if the taps run dry. Invest in a hand crank or battery-operated weather radio. When the electricity cuts out, your television and Wi-Fi are useless. Your cell service might even spotty. A simple radio will keep you connected to the outside world, giving you updates on road closures and repair crews. Plug in every gadget you own right now. Get those phones, laptops, and tablets to 100%. If you have portable power banks, charge those up too. In a crisis, your phone is your link to emergency services and your loved ones. I need to shift gears and talk to my friends in the Northeast about the ice threat. If you are in the Adirondacks, Central New Hampshire, Vermont, or Maine, you are looking at a serious glazing event, potentially over half an inch of ice. Some spots might see three quarters of an inch. When you get that much ice, the power line simply cannot hold the weight. You need to be ready for the lights to be out, not just for a few hours, but potentially for days or even a week if you are out in the country. The line crews work as hard as they can, but they have to be safe too. When an ice storm tears down thousands of wires, they have to fix the transmission lines first before they can get to the neighborhoods. If you live down a long country road, it might take a while for them to get to you. It is not personal, it is just the physics of the job. Prepare yourself for a long haul without electricity. Stock a supply of food that is good to eat right out of the package. Granola bars, nuts, crackers, and canned soups. If you have a grill, you can cook a hot meal, but keep that grill outdoors where it belongs. For those of you on well water, remember that no power means no pump. You need to have bottled water ready to go. Fill up every pitcher and bucket you have. Fill the tub so you have a reserve for the bathroom. If anyone in the family relies on refrigerated medicine, figure out a contingency plan now. Pack a cooler with ice or talk to a neighbor who has a generator. If you depend on life-sustaining medical equipment, call your utility company immediately to get on their priority list. And finally, 
have an exit strategy in place just in case the house gets too cold to be safe. Folks, let me be clear. Getting on the road during an ice storm is a gamble you will not win. We are talking about a layer of glaze so thin you can barely see it, but it turns the asphalt into a skating rink. You have zero traction. You cannot steer, and you certainly cannot stop. If they are calling for ice in your zip code, stay put, clear the calendar, work from the living room, reschedule that dentist appointment. Nothing is worth risking your life over. Now, if you have a genuine emergency and absolutely have to drive, you need to change your mindset. You are not driving, you are inching along. I am talking 20, maybe 30 miles per hour tops, even on the interstate. And you need to back way off. Give the car ahead of you a cushion of six to eight seconds. On ice, your stopping distance is not just double. It is nine times longer than on dry pavement. Nine times. Let that sink in. Think about the math here. If it normally takes you 100 feet to come to a halt on a sheet of ice, you are looking at 900 feet. That is the length of three football fields. You have to treat the controls like they are made of eggshells. No jerking the wheel, no stomping on the gas, and definitely no slamming the brakes. Gentle and gradual is the only way to survive. If you feel the back end slide, do not panic and lock them up. That guarantees a wreck. Ease off the pedal and steer where you want to go. If you have anti-lock brakes, hold steady pressure. If you are in an older rig without them, pump them lightly. Remember your basic meteorology. Cold air flows underneath bridges and overpasses, so they freeze way before the rest of the road. Treat every bridge like a trap. The same goes for shaded spots that haven't seen the sun all day. Assume every inch of pavement is slick until you know for a fact it is not. I want to speak directly to my friends down in the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. You folks are looking at a nasty setup Sunday afternoon into the evening. We are tracking damaging straight line winds, and I cannot rule out a few spin-up tornadoes. The worst part is this looks like a nocturnal threat hitting after dark, which makes it infinitely more dangerous. You need a fail-safe plan to get those warnings. A NOAA weather radio is the best investment you can make. It acts like a smoke detector for severe weather and will wake you up dead of sleep. Make sure the wireless emergency alerts are toggled on in your smartphone settings. Check it right now. Don't be the person who turned them off by accident and didn't know. Identify your shelter spot immediately. When that tornado warning drops, you head to the lowest floor, dead center of the house. Put as many walls between you and the wind as possible. Basements are king. If you are on a slab, an interior bathroom or closet is your best bet. Just stay away from the glass. Keep a flashlight and a sturdy pair of shoes right on your nightstand. If a siren goes off at 3 in the morning, you cannot be stumbling around in the pitch black looking for sneakers. You do not want to be walking through shattered glass and debris barefoot. Have the gear ready so you can execute your plan instantly. If you are caught on the road when a tornado warning is issued, do not try to play chicken with the storm. You will lose. Seek a sturdy structure immediately. If there is nothing around and the funnel is bearing down, bail out of the car. Get into a ditch or a low spot, lay flat, and cover your head. A car turns into a tumbleweed in high winds. A ditch gives you a fighting chance. Looking ahead to Monday, this flash freeze is going to be a nightmare for a huge chunk of the country. From the Great Lakes down through the Ohio Valley, temperatures are going to plummet, turning wet roads into solid ice right during the morning rush. We are talking about millions of people trying to commute on what amounts to a bobsled run. My advice is simple. If you don't have to be on the roads Monday morning, stay home. Call in sick, use a vacation day, do what you have to do. No paycheck is worth dying for. And listen, if your boss gives you grief about prioritizing your safety during a weather emergency, that is a reflection on their character, not yours. If you have no choice but to drive, leave way earlier than usual, double your commute time, and keep your eyes peeled if you see cars in the ditch that is nature telling you to park it. When you see a pile up, the road is closed, whether the signs say so or not. Find a safe spot to pull off and wait it out. Beware of black ice. It looks just like wet pavement, but it is a transparent killer that hides the asphalt underneath. It loves to form on-ramps, bridges, and low spots where the cold settles. If the thermometer says freezing and the road looks wet, do not trust it. Assume it is ice every single time. 
To my people in the snow belts, Buffalo, Watertown, Northwestern Pennsylvania, I know you guys are hardy, but do not get complacent. This system has staying power. Check the pantry. Ensure you have your medications. Go fire up the snowblower right now to make sure it starts. Fresh oil, new spark plug. Don't wait until there is three feet of snow on the driveway to find out it is broken. Make sure you have got spare gas cans filled and plenty of oil on the shelf. Everyone makes a run on rock salt at the last minute, so get yours today. Grab a bag of kitty litter or sand too. When it gets bitter cold, salt stops working, but sand will give you the grip you need. And check your shovels. If you have a long driveway, call the plow service today before their schedule is fully booked. Do me a favor and look out for the seniors on your block. It is just the right thing to do. They are the most vulnerable when the mercury drops. They might not be able to clear a path or haul in firewood. Walking over there and knocking on the door could literally save a life. If you have aging parents, pick up the phone. Verify they are ready. Offer to make a grocery run for them. Check that their furnace is kicking on and they have their prescriptions. Make sure they know how to reach you. Do it today, not Sunday, when the storm is already bearing down. Moms and dads, you know what cabin fever looks like. Prepare for being snowed in for a few days. Stock up on puzzles, board games, and crafts. Download the movies now while you have power. Keeping the kids entertained is half the battle when you are stuck inside. Don't forget the fur babies. Stock up on kibble. And please... Bring the outdoor pets inside. I don't care how tough they are. Extreme cold causes frostbite and hypothermia, just like it does in humans. They need a warm bed and water that isn't a block of ice. If your home runs on propane or heating oil, go check the gauge. If you are sitting at half a tank, call for a delivery immediately. You do not want to run dry in the middle of a blizzard when the trucks can't get through. Folks in mobile homes need to be extra vigilant. High winds and sub-zero temps are brutal on those structures. Check your skirting to keep the pipes from freezing. And if the forecast looks severe, go stay with a friend who has a foundation. It is better to be safe than sorry. If you are out there without a warm place to stay, please find a shelter. Churches and community agencies are opening their doors. Do not try to tough this out. Your life is worth more than your pride. Get to safety. Storms have a way of reminding us what community is all about. This is when we step up. If you have a generator and your neighbor doesn't, run an extension cord. If you have a warm meal, share it. God gave us talents and resources to share, not to hoard. You know, in Matthew 25, Jesus tells us that whatever we do for the least of these, we do for him. A winter storm is a real-world test of that faith. Help the single mom who is terrified of driving on ice. Check on the couple down the street whose heat went out. Help the family dealing with burst pipes. These aren't just chores. These are opportunities to be the hands and feet of Christ to our neighbors. Prepping isn't just about saving your own skin. It is about community resilience. When you are ready, you don't tax the emergency system. You free up first responders to help the people who are in dire straits. Be a helper, not a liability. Please take this forecast seriously. Prepare your home, look out for your loved ones, and keep your head on a swivel. We want everyone to make it through this storm safely. One bad decision on an icy road is all it takes to change lives forever. We are blessed with the ability to see these storms coming. Let's use that wisdom. Get prepared, help each other out, and trust that we will weather this together. God bless you all, and stay safe.